Hey everyone, this is Michelle for Expat Life Mexico, formerly Afro Expats, and I'm still here today. I'm taking my um, video here from the beach in Mazatlan. It is December, the day before Christmas, 2022. It's amazing. Um, I did a previous video in the sun, which is great. I got a tan, but um, now I'm hot, so I moved over here to the shade. Um, I'm going to give you a quick view of where we are. Really nice. So beyond is the beach and then there's like a pool over there. You can't see it because, um, because I am sitting too close to the wall. Anyway, today's video I think will be short. I would say this and then, uh, I'm just speaking my mind. Um, so first of all, this series that I'm creating is going to strictly be based on things that keep coming up in my day-to-day -day movements that I think will help other people to be prepared for should they decide to move to Mexico. Um, you know, I realize that there are lots of blessings in living in Mexico, but there are a lot of things that are extremely challenging. Um, or it takes time to figure out and I figured them out so I'm here to share them with you so if you enjoy this content or enjoy my channel for the last two years please hit the subscribe button I really would appreciate it if you subscribe if you watch um, my videos and also hit the like button it just helps make doing what I do make more sense for me and it's a lot of time um, but I enjoy talking about my experiences here in Mexico so I'm saying all of that, let's jump right in. So today I decided I was gonna talk about getting around Mexico by car. Now, this probably won't apply to most, but it will apply to some, it applies to me. And um, I, well, let's, let's say by car, but we can also talk about transportation. I'm gonna throw that in since I recently, um, actually I'm currently still on a trip that I did by bus and I want to talk about how easy that was. But before I get into that, I want to talk about if you do drive, um, what can those challenges look like, okay? Now, don't ask me about driving from the US to Mexico because I haven't done that. I know a lot of people who have and there's a lot of information mostly on Facebook. So if that's like the kind of info you're looking for, please go there to the Facebook expat groups and um, ask away. I can't tell you anything about driving from Texas or Cali down to San Miguel or down to Mexico because I just haven't done it, so I don't want to give advice on that. However, I can tell you that I bought my car here in Mexico. Um, the process to buy it was very, very simple. I even was able to purchase it on my tourist visa. I think that has since changed. Again, I'm not 100% sure. If you want more information on how to do these things in Mexico, you can certainly book a consultation with me at Expat Life Mexico, work with me, and um, you'll see that I have relocation strategy sessions and in there. Anything you ask me, I will go and research it and I'll get you all the resources. If I don't already have the resource, I will get it to you and you can um, then be on your merry way with whatever it is that you need to know about moving to Mexico. So today we're just gonna focus on driving uh, around and getting from one place to the other. People ask, do you use GPS? Yes, I do use GPS. Um, is it in English? Yes, it's in English. However, the pronunciations are not always accurate. So for example, Querétaro, which is the city that's one hour away from San Miguel, in the GPS is pronunciation, it's Caratero. So that alone can be confusing if you're not a comfortable driver, uh, an assertive driver. Um, driving in San Miguel, in my opinion, is not that difficult, even though some people think it is because the roads are small and there's a lot of one-way signs and things like that. But going from San Miguel, which people are very cur courteous, we stop for uh, pedestrians, um, people will let you let you go. So pretty much almost every intersection in San Miguel, outside of the ones that have traffic lights, are a 
one to one. It says uno a uno. And normally that means whoever got to the intersection first. Now, there are no stop signs. It's just assumed. They don't have like in the US a stop sign at every place that you're supposed to stop. Um, it's just assumed that when you get there, whoever got there first is next. And that's every intersection, every street in San Miguel. And if a pedestrian step, steps down off the sidewalk, you let them go, okay? This is like our little bubble of paradise. Most people are pretty courteous and this is the normal flow. Now, that doesn't happen. They're probably not from that area. <laughs> So don't just step down with your head down and think like everyone's going to stop you. You better still look out, okay? Um, this doesn't happen in other parts of Mexico, so just want you to, you know, be careful and, and cognizant um, when you're out in these streets. Now, you get to Querétaro, it's like a city, right? If you step down, you're probably going to get hit like you would in New York or anywhere else in the U.S. That's a city city. Um, there are speed bumps that control um, the speed of traffic in, in um, mostly in many parts of Mexico, um, in San Miguel especially, there are not a lot of traffic lights. There are some major light traffic light intersections that are fairly new. Um, I would say two years new. They were doing the finishing part of that, I believe, during COVID. Um, so. That's not something that we had when I moved here um, to Mexico. So just kind of like giving you a quick update on that. Now, in regard to GPS, what I have learned works best for me. And you know, there are those who wanna read the map. I like the step-by-step -step instructions because it just help me, helps me to know what exit do I need to get off and a lot of it is common sense because the GPS is not always accurate and on point. So oftentimes, what would happen in the past before, because I, I was so used to just listening to steps when I was driving around the US because we had more of a grid pattern in Florida and other places where it's very accurate. It's like, okay, you know, half a mile, take a right here, quarter of a mile, okay, take a right, right? Um, and the name was accurate and it showed whatever it had on the GPS matched, the, the, mostly matched whatever the signage was. Not in Mexico, okay? So what has happened in Mexico is I would follow like the step-by-step -step, but the voice. And the first couple times we did some trips, I'm just gonna turn this just a tad because I'm still in the sun. Alright, kind of hot. Okay, so um, what would happen was the step by step would say, get off at, um, let's, I'm just gonna throw something out there, Mexico 57, Highway 57, in, you know, one kilometer, which is less than a mile. Okay, so you know, I'm driving along, I got the map thing up, and just going along, going along, and then I would get to that exit, and it would say the name that it just said out loud, but it would be like multiples of the same name, and the exits were like one, two, three. And so I'd be like, oh shit which one is it right and they all kind of said the same thing and i was just like oh my god like where are we supposed to go so maybe it's just me but what i found to be way easier in combating this challenge while driving was to look at the step by step and on the step by step it counts down the meters Again, not in feet I've gotten used to that as well I'm okay with it um, it counts down in meters so when it gets to like about a hundred meters and I see it going down and whatever's the closest exit to that one uh, zero meters or 20 meters or 10 meters I know I got to turn there I don't even pay attention to what the name is or anything because the name is never accurate 
and I found that the way that highways have been engineered, I think for ease of construction, that a lot of the exits, they just kind of clumped them together so that maybe they didn't have to, I don't know, build a whole different road a quarter mile down the, down the highway or half a mile or whatever. They would just like do one, two, and three. So here's like one bridge and we're gonna section that off into two, two different ways, but the names are not accurate. So there's a lot of things like this that can be very challenging in Mexico in general where things kind of don't really make sense to us because we're not used to them. It doesn't mean, you know, it's a bad thing. It's just kind of like we're kind of used to a little bit more accuracy. And, um, you know, if you're driving, you gotta be careful. You know, you gotta pay attention and trying to get over and someone else is coming. It might be a little bit kind of like, oh my God, what do I do? And if you miss that exit, honestly, it's not so easy to turn around. That's another thing. And again, that kind of has to do with maybe the engineering. So there have been a few times when I missed a turn or I missed an exit and I had to um, try to get myself a little bit out of the sun here. Hot, hot, hot. Okay. So there were a few times when um, we had to let me make sure this is not making a lot of noise. Well, we had to go like at least 10 miles or so all the way down to some toll, take some weird turn around, pay a toll, and turn around to come back to just, it's just like, there's not a lot of interconnectivity in regard to um, missing an exit off the highway. So sometimes they might have like, you know, an opening, which they have those in the U.S., but those are typically for law enforcement here. Not such a big deal, but they are dangerous. Um, you know, there's not always a lot of um, extra room on the side of the road for you to kind of pull over and make a U-turn onto the other side of the highway. So it can be a little dangerous. It's dark at night you're not really going to find um, a lot of uh, places that have you know lights continuous lights it just kind of depends on where you are so where we are these are the things that I'm talking about um, so you just have to be like a little bit more discerning and kind of confident with getting around but I don't find it difficult I know people say to me when they see me driving around saying oh my god how do you navigate these streets and I'm like you know what I feel that it's easy to navigate around San Miguel because um, people are courteous you know they're not trying to run you off the road so it kind of makes uh, error less stressful the police don't really harass um, you like if you make a wrong turn or something like that now there are a lot of one-way streets and to wait the way to know if it's a one-way typically is there are arrows kind of like around like would be right up here painted <laughs> on the walls or on the corner of the buildings so let's say i'm coming out straight and then there's a street here how i would know if it's a right only a left only or both ways is there going to be there's going to be an arrow so it would be a double arrow, a right only arrow, or a left only arrow. There's no written out thing that says one way. Just look at the, the uh, direction of the arrow, which makes a lot of sense. So um, those are kind of the challenges that I find with uh, driving. Now, we switch to getting around Mexico by a bus because we just did that. Um, if you have questions about you know GPS and driving around, I find it very easy. Um, I know lots of folks who've driven to Mexico, they're still here with their cars from the U.S. That's a whole nother topic and subject. Um, again, I can't really advise you on that. You can probably find a lot of things about it on YouTube or in my Facebook groups. But in regard to getting around by bus, so prior to this, I had only really ridden the bus to like Mexico City. Um, 
to Querétaro and that was kind of it. Very easy. There's buses from San Miguel, um, two buses a day that go directly to the Mexico City Airport and that's the ETN line um, and two buses that also return from Mexico City Airport directly to San Miguel, meaning you, you get on in Mexico City, you get off in San Miguel. So normally because San Miguel is such a small uh, town, which I don't quite get why they don't have more options to the airport because yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of us that live in San Miguel. But anyway, what you normally would have to do is get to the bus station in Querétaro, which is much bigger. And um, there's buses to Mexico City every 30 minutes on a lot of the different lines. So you can almost walk in without buying a ticket in advance on the day and time that you want to go and just buy a ticket. Prices are super uber affordable. The ETN line from San Miguel to Mexico City um, was I think about 30 to 35 US one way um, directly to the airport when I went a few months ago with uh, Micah and a few friends when we were traveling. Um, so, but this most recent trip was like a serious bus ride. So um, I got this notion to take uh, the El Chepe Express, which is a train, phenomenal, from um, Creel, which is in Chihuahua, small town in Chihuahua, to Los Mochis, or vice versa. You can go from Los Mochis back down to Creel, and there are a few stops in between. We're not going to talk about the Chepe train today. However, if you are interested in the Chepe, I will have a video about that as well but it's called L-E-L-Chepe, C-H-E-P-E. And if you're trying to find them online, all you have to do is type in Chepe Express or Chepe.mx and you can get that uh, information. But this is uh, an amazing trip that uh, Micah and I did for Christmas and that's a separate topic. But we had to get there and um, because I planned it at the last minute, <coughs> excuse me, um, I was determined that we were getting on the train. And I realized getting on the train was more priority than how to get to the train. So, because we did not make a plan, which they recommend two to four months in advance, I was able to nab some seats by reversing my um, the original route that I was looking at, reversing it from um, going from Creole up or down rather to Los Mochis instead. And then I was just like, oh, I'll figure out how we get, we get there by bus. Um, because trying to fly during Christmas and not having like really, this was like a one week putting it together. Um, it was just it was outrageously expensive and it was still a lot of time and I just thought, you know what, this will be great. This will be an adventure for us. We're going to um, see the countryside, right? So what I want to say about it is it was actually very phenomenal and amazing and we're still um, with one leg of our trip to head back to San Miguel from beautiful Manzapan. Um, it helped me to learn a little bit more the geography of Mexico and where things were. Um, my camera's kind of blowing here. Um, so what I was able to piece together was taking the bus. Um, after I got the, the train ticket settled, taking the bus from Querétaro, right, because again, that's the major station, and going to Creel. So, I didn't know, like, I, I, there was a bus to Los Mochis when I was originally looking at that route, but then there was no availability in that direction. So, I got the tickets for the train, and I was like, oh crap, like, I didn't even see, like, how do I get to Creel? In the opposite direction so what I found out was um, 
I had to just basically get to Querétaro. And again, if you live close to most major cities, for sure Mexico City, uh, Querétaro, um, any major city, there are a lot of um, private bus lines that will go to very specific places or at least gets you to another major city. And then from there, you can take kind of more of a local bus line to your final destination. So pretty much the way to travel in Mexico for a lot of folks is either by bus or by car, I guess. Um, I'm pretty sure like a lot of people also are flying, not saying that this is not the norm either, but um, you can pretty much take a bus to anywhere and I like it. So I'm gonna tell you our first bus ride was from Caretaro to Chihuahua City. I had never been to Chihuahua, the state of, the city, nothing. Um, and it was long. It was, um, first of all, the bus was late and we were on, what bus line? Hmm. I can't even remember. Too many buses, it'll come to me. Anyway, it was comfortable. It wasn't Primera Plus and ETN, they just, oh, they don't go to those places. So from Caretaro to um, Chihuahua City, we were on um, Chihuahua Nisus bus line. And where I purchased the tickets, it said Futura, which was the bus line as well. But when it was the day of our bus trip, they were like, no, this is the, the bus. And I thought, oh, you did a switcheroonie on me. I hope it's nice. And it was. So they had like, you know, the seats where you can put your feet out. Um, you can put something down at the, at the um, like a leg rest that comes out, kind of like a recliner. The seat goes back, almost too far back because the person in front of me was almost in my lap. Um, but on the back of each of the seats, they had TVs. You could plug in earplugs. I think you could listen to music. They had games for children. Um, they had ports to charge your phone. Um, so it was convenient. You know, Micah and I came prepared. I had my portable uh, battery charger and we were ready for this trip without all of that. So these were like value adds. Um, we brought sandwiches and food and um, there were a few stops where people got on and were selling things but I didn't buy anything so I can't really talk about it. So I think it's a good idea if you're on a long ride to bring your own food with you, bring your own sandwiches, um, whatever, your snacks and your water and stuff like that. I think you can get off at the bus stops because the bus stops at a lot of the stations and some of the major stations um, they have restaurants and most of them have something a cafeteria or food or whatever if you didn't bring anything with you um, but I want to talk about the price so it was just great I mean that ride was extra long so we were supposed to leave at 11 a.m. the bus did not actually leave until 12 and that's just because traffic they can't really predict exactly to the T. Um, I think only one of our buses so far kind of left on time. Every bus has been late, but it's okay. Um, so we left around noon and we got there the next morning at seven. So we were on the bus for about 17 hours. It's a lot of bus, um, but it was overnight mostly well, part of it was overnight, so it was good. You know, like I said, we downloaded stuff on Netflix. I had things to read. I slept, looked out the window, took video, talked about the experience. I liked it a lot. I think it's, um, if you can sit that long, it's, it's a great way to see the country. Um, and it was an adventure. I wouldn't necessarily do this all the time. I don't mind flying, but I also, typically don't mind driving now but that would not be a drive that i would do on my own either um so but if you know you have two or three other people and you kind of know where you're going or you have a caravan of other cars you know go for it um so we're on the bus for 17 hours there was a police checkpoint um that was somewhat annoying but you know i was able to speak a little spanish and go on my merry way covered that in my um 
in my video about our, our El Chepe Express. So if you uh, didn't get to see that, watch it. It's, it was a great experience um, overall. Um, and okay, so the cost was for that 17 hour bus ride about 150 US dollars for both of us. So adult and child fare. I think it was somewhere around 150 bucks. And it got us all the way to Chihuahua. And then from Chihuahua, there was another local bus, same brand, same name, Chihuahua Nisas, that took us directly from um, Chihuahua bus station to Creel, which was another four or five hour bus trip. I mean, the views were just amazing. And that cost us about 25 bucks. So I would say overall, the transportation to get all the way there, a 24 hour-ish bus ride um, was about 175 uh, US dollars. And yes, you're sitting for a long time, but you know, my sense of adventure did not mind so much. And then from there, I realized, okay, we got on the train, finally, like a few days later, after exploring the area a little bit, we took the train, the train ride was nine plus hours, or even more, spectacular. That train ride was pricey. We were in executive class, so you can look that up online, um, but just so worth it. Like, it was just amazing, that's all I could say about it. And once, once we got to Los Mochas, we got off, and um, you know, we took a taxi to our hotel and we stayed there for two nights. And then on the way back, I decided we're gonna stop in Mazatlan. And that's where we are right now. And that was, um, uh, I think about six hours to get further south. And we're right on the beach. Um, and I don't remember the cost, but let me think about this in pesos. It wasn't a lot at all. I would say it was like 35 US dollars for me and Micah. Yeah, about 35, like 700 something pesos. So 35-ish US dollars for Micah and I to ride that bus ride six hours from Los Mochis, which is in Sinaloa, down here to Mazatlan and hang out on the beach. So this is where we are until tomorrow, Christmas evening. And the bus from Mazatlan back to Queretaro cost about um, another 150. And that's gonna be an additional 12 hours. So it's a lot of riding, but it's in a, it, to me, it's, it was so efficient. Like I literally got off the bus um, when we arrived here and I asked them, hey, do you have tickets to Queretaro? They said, we don't go to Queretaro. This was that particular brand. It was called Tufesa. And they were like, oh, go to Premier Plus. Premier Plus is also an amazing, um, an amazing ride. You know, their buses are definitely one of the higher end buses. And they were like, just go across the street, ask them. So I went over there. They had two seats left Christmas evening. You know, I was a little bit concerned, and I was like, well, if I have to stay an extra day or two, whatever, um, and Mazatlan is not a good, it's not a bad place to be stuck here at the beach, um, but I'm kind of ready to go home. So in saying that, it was super easy. I just walked over across the street in five minutes. I had my bus tickets to get back home. Um, super efficient. The rides are great. Um, the only disadvantage, I think, is you know, if there are people on the bus that are sick, you know, I found that to be a little bit nerve wracking, you know. So we, we had our mask, we did get a little bit sick. I'm pretty sure we picked up something along the way. Um, so that's just something to think about. Like if you're someone who doesn't have maybe the best immunity and you're riding for a while, you know, be prepared if you have to ride the bus. I mean, it can be the same on the plane, um, but you're on the bus a little longer depending on where you're going. Wear a mask, um, vitamin C it up, uh, whatever it is you do to boost your system. 
Yeah, so we decided we were going to, you know, put our mask on and just, you know, dress warm if you need to, if you're going to a cold place, etc. So that's it for transportation. If you are interested in learning more about buses, you can look that up online. ETN, ETN, Primera Plus, um, there's Futura that goes to kind of these more remote places. There's Omni. Um, there's Chihuahua Nises, Hulu, and it all depends on where you are. Um, the Futessa bus was the Futessa was the bus from Los Mochas to Mazatlan, and it was actually very nice. Um, so, and the bus actually from gosh, where was I? From Chihuahua to Creole was the bus that was mediocre and also even though i selected my seats once we got on we were just like told oh it's wherever so that was the only bus that didn't seem to have as much structure but i think it was just like one of those buses it's on the road for a couple hours way more like the local setting not really necessarily just tourists but people who are really trying to get from point A to B because they have goods and merchandise and things that they bought and people getting dropped off along the way. So it's sort of like the somewhat tourist bus plus local bus with, um, you know, your common bus stops in between. Like there's a dirt road. I live up that dirt road. I need to get off here. Whereas the other buses really only stop at bus stations. So just saying, FYI, be ready for it all. Um, if you like this content, please hit the like button. I appreciate you. Please hit subscribe if you have not subscribed already to my channel. Thanks again. It's Michelle in Mazatlan, burning up. Um, I'm happy to share these things with you. This is my new series where I'm just going to talk about things that I'm experiencing um, on my day-to-day -day movement. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them below. And if I missed anything that I said I was going to post and I didn't, just say it there and I will be sure to add it, okay? Thank you and have a great one.